So I said in the last section that um, it's important to treat acute inflammation um, so it doesn't develop into chronic implica uh, inflammation and um, get into potential complications. So um, for treatment of inflammation, there are um, drug treatments, certainly. Um, aspirin or acetyl uh, salicylic acid um, has long been used as an anti-inflammatory agent, um, sometimes in very large doses. So sometimes um, rheumatologists will tell people if they're having a gout flare um, to take a, a really large dose of aspirin um, and to uh, take the flare down really quick. So um, aspirin decreases prostaglandin synthesis at the site of inflammation. So it works in the periphery. Um, and it was, it was first discovered in the late 1800s. And um, that was its, um, that was really the first um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. So um, aspirin reduces pain. It has an analgesic effect. It also has an antipyretic effect, which reduces fever. Um, and that can often be helpful, but it's usually not recommended for children with viral infections because the combination of aspirin and a viral infection is believed to contribute to the development of Ray syndrome, which is a serious complication involving the brain and the liver, and it can be fatal. Um, so there's a chart in the book, which we'll look at in a second, um, where it talks about the different um, comparison of drugs used to treat inflammation and their potential adverse effects. So that's something really to know about. Um, acetaminophen, which is um, Tylenol, um, decreases fever and pain, but doesn't diminish the inflammatory response. Um, it's also um, metabolized a little bit differently. It's um, in the liver. And so um, you want to Definitely know if you have any, if it compromised liver um, before using Tylenol. Um, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs, um, these are things like ibuprofen, um, Aleve, Advil, Motrin, um, naproxen is the um, chemical name for Aleve. Um, they're really used extensively for lots of different anti inflammatory conditions. Um, they have anti-inflammatory, analgesic, and antipyretic activities, um, the NSAIDs. There are some over-the-counter ones, and then there are some prescription ones as well. Um, they also act by reducing the production of prostaglandins, um, and uh, they're often used to treat inflammation in the uh, musculoskeletal system. Both acute injuries and long-term problems such as rheumatoid arthritis. So NSAIDs have a a wide range of treatment possibilities. Um, they also have um, a lot of times they're the treatment of choice for treating um, for dental procedures because you want the anti-inflammatory and the um, analgesic, but you don't want the blood thinning effect of aspirin. Um, so usually they're, they're oral and they're over the counter. Um, there are prescription strengths of um, most NSAIDs. Um, there's a newer type of NSAID that's um, by prescription only. Um, the trade name is Celebrex. Um, it's a lot of times um, it's the uh, drawbacks of NSAIDs is that they are hard on the stomach and um, Celebrex is supposed to be not hard on the stomach. And um, so they are sometimes used with arthritis or other um, chronic inflammatory conditions. Um, there's, there's some pretty bad side effects with them. And so there, you definitely wanna um, consult with your doctor um, before taking those. So corticosteroids or steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are synthetic chemicals that are related to um, naturally occurring uh, glucocorticoids, um, which are hormones that are reduced by the adrenal cortex gland in the body. Um, they are usually, they're used for short-term treatment of inflammation in many disorders. They have significant undesirable effects, which we'll discuss in a minute, um, but they, um, their anti-inflammatory effects 
um, are widespread and that's why they're used for short term. A lot of times they're used in an acute exacerbation of a long term illness like an RA flare or a, um, an MS flare or um, some other kind of acute exacerbation. So um, steroids decrease capillary permeability and enhance the effectiveness of um, epinephrine and norepinephrine and the vascular system is stabilized. So epinephrine and um, norepinephrine are um, used a lot, are um, neurotransmitters used a lot by the sympathetic nervous system. And one of the major effects of the sympathetic nervous system is to control blood flow in the body. So um, the, by affecting those neurotransmitters, they stabilize the vascular system. Um, they, steroids reduce the number of leukocytes and mast cells at the site, and they decrease the release of histamine and prostaglandins. So it's kind of knocking down the inflammatory response. Um, it, blocking the immune response um, is another effect of corticosteroids, and um, it's a common, the immune response is a common cause of inflammation. So um, you can see why they're uh, useful, but you can, when we look at the side effects, you can also see why you got to be careful with them. So long-term use and high dosages of glucocorticoids have um, some pretty bad side effects. Um, so the side effects um, should be considered when taking um, a medical history from the patient. Um, the adverse effects of glucocorticoids include atrophy of lymphoid tissue, um, so that's a, part, a big part of our immune system. Um, reduced numbers of white blood cells leading to an increased risk of infection and a decreased immune response. So um, if you're, that's one of the contraindications when you're getting um, the COVID vaccine is if you've recently had um, corticosteroids, um, you might have a decreased immune response and the vaccine won't work. So um, that is something to think about. There are also catabolic effects with um, increased tissue breakdown and decreased protein synthesis and tissue regeneration. So um, there, um, you can uh, have side effects, including osteoporosis, bone demineralization, muscle wasting, and um, thinning and breakdown of the skin and mucosa. So um, that's a pretty significant side effect. You can have delayed healing, delayed growth in children, um, retention of sodium and water leading to high blood pressure and edema. Um, so it's um, useful in the short term, but the long-term effects are uh, many. There are many long-term effects. So here's our chart from the book where we um, compare. Um, so it has aspirin, acetaminophen, NSAIDs, glucocorticoids, and um, COX-2 inhibitors, that's the um, Celebrex. Um, so it has the, whether they're um, anti-inflammatory, analgesic, or antipyretic. So glucocorticoids, they're anti-inflammatory, but they're not analgesic or antipyretic. Um, and, you know, you can look at some of the other ones. So acetaminophen is analgesic and antipyretic, but not anti-inflammatory. It's like the opposite of glucocorticoids. <laughs> and then here are all the potential adverse effects. So acetaminophen, you can see why it's used often because look in the um, potential adverse effects, no, 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 a lot of them. And uh, um, aspirin, couple of yeses, couple of nos. It's a, it's a wash. Um, glucocorticoid, lots of yeses. Um, COX-2 inhibitors, a lot of different things may occur. So um, that one's, the jury's still out on that one. Um, so like any drug use um, medications, there, you have to do a cost-benefit analysis. Are the side effects worth the, the primary effects that you're taking the drug for? You can decide. So um, the anti-inflammatory anti effects of glucocorticoids decrease capillary permeability, enhanced effectiveness of epinephrine and norepinephrine in the sympathetic nervous system, stabilizing the vascular system, reduced number of leukocytes and mast cells, and a reduced immune response, which is sometimes involved in an inflammatory response. So yeah, they work for anti-inflammatory, um, but the adverse effects um, 
increased risk of infection, increased tissue breakdown, decreased protein synthesis, delayed healing, delayed growth in children, retention of sodium and water. Um, so this, I like this graphic because it shows, um, sure there are a lot of therapeutic effects, but there are also a lot of side effects. So you kind of have to decide if it's worth it. If you're having an acute exacerbation of a chronic problem, it might be worth it to be short-term on glucocorticoids. 